Sylvester Antibantungania is a former president of Burundi. He was elected by the National Assembly after the assassination of President Ndade, leader of the Front for Democracy in Burundi, Frodbu, that had won the elections in 1993. Formerly Antibantungania was a speaker of the National Assembly of Burundi appointed in 1993. The same year he served briefly as foreign minister. During his term the national security situation deteriorated due to a significant influx of Rwandan refugees and to constant tensions between the two main pseudo-ethnic groups, the Hutu and the Tutsi. As a consequence he was overthrown from power by a Tutsi intervention. At the present, Antibantungania is a senator for life as all Burundi former heads of state. Sylvester Antibantungania, born May 8, 1956, is a Burundian politician. He was president of the National Assembly of Burundi from December 23, 1993 to September 30, 1994, and president of Burundi from April 6, 1994 to July 25, 1996, interim to October 1994. Sylvester Antibantungania was born on May 8, 1956 in the commune of Jishubi, Gaidaga province. He is an ethnic Hutu. As a child he intended on becoming a priest, and thus after finishing primary school he attended Madra Seminary. He left after his first semester and then attended university. He graduated in 1984 with a bachelor's degree in history and geography and sought out a teaching position but could not obtain one. From April 1984 to December 1987 he worked as a journalist for Burundi National Radio and Television. In the 1970s Antibantungania was a member of the movement of progressive Burundi students, Movement d'Etudiens Progressistes Burundi. In August 1979 some of the student movement members founded the Burundi Workers' Party, Umyogamwi Wabakosi Burundi, Ubu, a revolutionary socialist political party. To join the party, an applicant had to be sponsored by a member and was accepted on a probationary basis while they were educated in Marxism. Antibantungania was sponsored by one of the founding members and after three months became a full member of the party. By 1981 he sat on its central committee as its national secretary for external relations. Yubu developed two factions, with the first advocating armed revolution and the second led by Antibantungania and Melchior Ndade advocating democracy and political freedom. As a result of these ideological divisions, the two men left Yubu in 1983. In 1988, President Pierre Buyoya decreed the creation of a 24-person commission to study ethnic divisions in Burundi and create a plan for national unity. Antibantungania served on the panel, which produced a charter of national unity, but it was denounced by Hutu members of the political opposition for being dominated by Tutsis and presenting an elitist point of view of the country. Antibantungania later called the project a failure. In May 1991 he founded Tujujurain, a Kyrandi newspaper. He co-founded the Front pour la Démocratie au Burundi, Frodebu, in 1986 and for a time edited its official newspaper, El Obe de la Démocratie, lit. Dawn of Democracy, and in 1993 served on the party's central committee. In Burundi's legislative elections held on June 29, 1993, Antibantungania was elected to a seat in the National Assembly representing Gaidaga. He became Minister of Foreign Affairs in Prime Minister Sylvie Kinigi's government on July 10. Early in the morning on October 21, 1993 Tutsi soldiers in the Burundian army launched a coup and attacked the presidential palace. The president's wife called Antibantungania called to warn him about the putsch. Thus informed, he began calling fraud the leaders in an attempt to rally the government and warned Minister of Communications Jean-Marie Jandahia. He also called the charge d'affaires at the United States Embassy and extracted his assurances that the United States government would condemn the coup. He then resolved to flee. Distrustful of his military guard, Antibantungania changed into his gardener's clothes and walked to a friend's home, where he remained in hiding for the next two days. His wife, Yusbi Anshim Rimana, was murdered by soldiers while attempting to hide at a different home, though their infant child survived. 
he subsequently found refuge at the French embassy with Kinigi and other government officials. President Ndate was ultimately killed in the coup, as were the other officials in the presidential line of succession. Antibon Tunganya later recalled the night of the coup as his saddest memory. Ndate's death left him the interim leader of Frodebu. He resigned as Minister of Foreign Affairs on December 22, 1993. The following day he was elected President of the National Assembly. Frodebu also set about trying to name a new president. This stoked a rivalry between Antibon and Tunganya and another Frodebu co-founder, Leonard Niangoma. By his own account, Antibon and Tunganya decided to withdraw himself as a candidate despite having the support of the Central Committee, citing his desire to focus on party matters, and Jandahia suggested that Frodebu back Cyprien Antariamira for the position instead. Frodebu reached an agreement with the opposition, whereby Antari Amira was sworn in as president of Burundi on February 5, 1994 with a new government. On April 6, 1994 President Antari Amira was traveling on a Rwandan plane with Rwandan President Juvenal Habia Ramana. The aircraft was shot down by unknown assailants over Kigali, killing all aboard. The shootdown triggered the Rwandan genocide. Following the crash, Antibon Tunganya made a broadcast on Burundi television, flanked by the Minister of Defense and the Army Chief of Staff, appealing for calm. He attributed Antari Amira's death to the facts of circumstance and believed that he was not the target of the assassination. In accordance with the Constitution Antibon Tunganya, as President of the National Assembly, became the interim President of Burundi. Prime Minister Anatole Konyankiko and his government officially resigned but stayed in power pending the confirmation of a new executive. Antibon Tunganya and Konyankiko enjoyed a good working relationship. Tihi President, is expected to be strong and authoritative. Sylvester Antibon Tunganya, however, was neither. He never directly sought the presidency, within his own party he was accused of prolixity, hesitation, and indecisiveness. He lacked experience in either business or government, in making quick, firm decisions. United States Ambassador to Burundi Bob Kruger Faced with the spillover of the Rwandan Civil War, Antibon Tunganya's government pursued a strict policy of neutrality, denying officials of the former Habia Ramana regime residency in Bujumbura and refusing to allow French troops to use Burundi as a staging area for Operation Turquoise. In May Antibon Tunganya met with RPF leader Pasteur Bazimungu. The genocide created a refugee crisis, an estimated 300,000 Rwandans ultimately fled to Burundi, while approximately 180,000 Burundian exiles who had fled to Rwanda in October 1993 also returned. With international assistance, Antibon Tunganya's government opened new refugee camps to house them. Over the course of 1994 the political and security situation in Burundi continued to deteriorate. Moderates in both Upperna and Frodebu were marginalised as radicals gained increasing influence and ethnic violence permeated the countryside. By the middle of the year Antibon Tunganya was the only original member of the Frodebu Central Committee still actively engaged with the party and the civil political process, with the others having been killed or having fled into exile. The party fractured into at least three groups, with the smallest section supporting Antibon Tunganya, though many felt his cooperation with and concessions to the army and the opposition amounted to a capitulation. Another faction became a rebel group, the Concile National pour la Defense de la Démocratie, Forces pour la Defense de la Démocratie, CNDD, FDD. His tenure as president of the National Assembly ended on September 30, 1994. In early February 1995 Antibon Tunganya dismissed two upper na ministers after they failed to show up to a cabinet meeting. Later that month, upper na extremists displeased with the coalition government forced out Prime Minister Konyankiko and replaced him with Antoine Andueo. Andueo actively undermined the president's policies. In 1995 Antibon Tunganya married his second wife, Pascasi Manani. In the summer of 1995 the Burundian army purchased heavy weapons from China. Fearful of the implications of their arrival, 
and Taiban Tanganya quietly persuaded the Tanzanian government to delay the shipment on its soil. Under pressure from UN and domestically, Antiban Tanganya was forced to let the arms be delivered. At the behest of Tutsi extremists he also convinced the National Assembly to grant the army and gendarmerie emergency powers to restrict freedom of movement and speech. With the civil war worsening and ethnic violence increasing, on June 25, 1996 Antiban Tanganya participated in regional security talks in Mwanza, Tanzania. As a consequence of the meeting, the president and Anduweo both agreed to appeal for international military assistance. The Burundian army feared this would mean its usurpation by foreign intervention, and Uparna immediately denounced the proposal. Anduweo then accused Antiban Tanganya of subverting the military, and joined the thousands of others in the capital in marching against an intervention. On July 20, 300 Tutsis at a displaced persons camp were massacred presumably by Hutu rebels. When Antiban Tanganya attempted to attend a funeral for them three days later the crowd of mourners attacked him with stones, forcing him to evacuate via helicopter. Antiban Tanganya then obtained intelligence which suggested his life was threatened. He refused to resign but asked for refuge at the United States ambassador's residence, which was granted. On July 25 he went to the residence, while Andueo announced his government's resignation. Major Pierre Buyoya subsequently took power in a military coup. He announced the suspension of the constitution, the dissolution of the National Assembly, and the banning of political parties, but declared that he would guarantee Antiban Tanganya's safety. Antiban Tanganya later entered negotiations with Buyoya, who agreed to provide him with a home in the Bujumbura suburb of Kiriri. He left the United States Embassy on June 8, 1997, saying, I reaffirm that I shall not yield on the principle for a search for a negotiated solution for all problems that face our country. Antiban Tanganya served as a senator for life as a former head of state from the implementation of the Arusha Accords until August 2018. On June 14, 2007 his membership in Frodebu was suspended. He was a candidate in the 2015 Burundian presidential election. In July he and several other opposition candidates dropped out of the race, citing concerns for their safety and fear that incumbent President Pierre Nkurunziza would rig the outcome in his favor. The following year he spent several months in exile in Belgium. In 2020 he led the East African Community's election monitoring team for Tanzania's general elections. In 1999 Antiban Tanganya released his first book, Democratie, on, Portu le Burundais, published by El Harmattan. He spent 14 years writing another book, Burundi, Democratie Pige, which he published in 2019. During the celebration of International Book Day on April 23, 2021 he lamented that Burundians do not read and called for the national promotion of literature. He was Speaker of the National Assembly of Burundi from December 1993 to October 1, 1994 and President of Burundi from April 6, 1994 to July 25, 1996, interim to October 1994. The Diplomatic Passport of Sylvester Antiban Tanganya Antiban Tanganya was born in Jishubi, Gaidaga, and is an ethnic Hutu. He served as foreign minister briefly during 1993. He came into office when the previous president, Cyprien Antari Amira, was killed in a plane crash, an assassination in which the Rwandan president Juvenal Javier Romano was also killed. Antiban Tanganya left office when he was deposed by Pierre Buyoya in a military coup of 1996. Antiban Tanganya is presently a senator for life as a former head of state. The Diplomatic Passport of Sylvester Antiban Tanganya February 2019, the former president Antiban Tanganya presented his book Burundi, Democratie Pige or, Burundi, Trap Democracy. The 726-page book which took 10 years to be written, is a testimony to the recent history of Burundi from 1987 to 2017. The former president Antiban Tanganya explained why he wrote this book. According to him, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, TRC, has been working for more than four years. 
to fulfill its mission, it needs the contributions of all those who have truths to reveal, confessions to make, or questions to express. Among these partners, former heads of state have a leading role. They must contribute to the emergence of the liberating truth that Burundians expect. One of the ways in which they can pass is to testify by writing. The Dilomatic Passport of Sylvester Antibantungania. In writing this book, he wants to testify about these events and thus give his modest contribution to the work of the CVR on this crucial period in the history of Burundi. Mr. Antibantungania made it clear that this book is not a history book. It is a set of notes from documents read, testimonies lived, and analyzed made for history over the period from 1987 to 2017. Thank you for watching this video.